This is Melanie Fine with Chem and 10. Today we're going to talk about Vesper theory, valence shell electron parapulsion. Vesper theory is based on the fact that valence electrons repel each other because they are like charges. So a molecule assumes a shape that keeps each valence electron pair as far away from each other as possible. Hence, Vesper theory predicts the shapes of molecules. This is how it works. In order to determine the shape of a molecule, you need to know the central atom and how many atoms are bonded to it. You also need to know if the central atom has any lone pairs. Remember that a lone pair is an unbonded pair of electrons. So here we have a water molecule. We have two bonds. So we're looking at the central atom oxygen. It has a, two bonds, one to each hydrogen, and two lone pairs. Steric number is defined as the number of electron pairs surrounding an atom, both bonding and non-bonding. So for example, again in water, we have two bonds, and we have two lone pairs for a total steric number of four. An atom, or a central atom, that has a steric number of one means it's only attached to one thing, either a lone pair or a bond, and that will have a linear shape, a bond angle of 180 degrees, for example, nitrogen gas, N2. Notice that the electrons are as far apart from each other as possible in this geometry. All the geometries work out so that the electron pairs are as far away from each other as possible. Steric number of two, we're talking about our central atom. Our central atom has only two things coming out of it. In this case, with carbon dioxide, it's got two bonds coming out of it, and it's linear. So again, the bond angle is 180 degrees. Steric number of three, look at boron trifluoride, we have a trigonal planar shape. So these fluorine, mole fluorine atoms will spread out as far each from each other as possible, which makes up a trigonal planar. If one of those shapes were replaced with a lone pair as opposed to the, um, the three fluorine atoms, so in this case we have that yellow, which is the lone pair, what results is a bent molecule. And again, its, its angle is 120 degrees, just like the angles in the trigonal planar. Steric number four is a tetrahedral shape. Here we have carbon tetrahydride, or methane, the hydrogens are as far apart from each other as possible with a bond angle of 109.5 degrees. If we replace one of those bonds with a lone pair, we end up with a trigonal pyramidal. Some people call it pyramidal. I like to call it trigonal pyramidal. I guess that's how my high school teacher taught me. So here we have ammonia. One of the bonds is replaced with a lone pair, and the bond angle is 107.5 degrees. Notice the bond angle is a little bit e even closer than the 109.5 in, in the previous screen, and that's because lone pairs are especially repulsive. They push the bonds closer to each other. If we add another lone pair, like in the water molecule with two lone pairs, we have a bent shape with a bond angle of 100.5 degrees. A steric number of five, in this case in phosphorus pentachloride, there are five bonds coming out of the central phosphorus. Notice that in the middle you have this trigonal planar, and then you've got the top and bottom 90 degrees away from that plane. So it's a trigonal planar with a top and bottom. So it's trigonal by pyramidal or trigonal by pyramidal. So we have two different types of bond angles. We have 120 degree bond angles and 90 degree bond angles. When we replace one of those bonds with a, with a lone pair, it becomes a seesaw shape, and you can see that here where the top is taken, or actually one of the sides is taken off. Now you have a 180 degree bo bond angle, and it's a seesaw shape, as in sulfur tetrafluoride. With two lone pairs, we have T-shaped, and with three lone pairs, we have a linear molecule. Steric number of six, we have an octahedral molecule with 90 degree bond angles. When one of those bonds is replaced by a lone pair, we have a square pyramidal. And with two lone pairs, we have a square planar with 90 degree bond angles. Here's a summary chart. Steric numbers two through four and the number of lone pairs, the specific shape in the bond angles and pictures, and continuing with the steric number five, and finally steric number six. 
So that's valence shell electron pair repulsion theory in a nutshell. For more great videos like this and to learn how to turn copper into gold, go to chemin10.com. This is Melanie Fine, and thanks for watching. Thank <laughs> you.